ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another Sentinel SV action figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at none other than Peter B. Parker from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and I personally could not be more excited. I'm a huge fan of their Miles release, it wasn't perfect, but it's still a darn good offering. And this guy looks to be the most comprehensive, complete version of Peter from that universe. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art, and you've probably already noticed from the intro, this box is rather thick. That's because this happens to be the deluxe version that also comes with this massive gargoyle diorama display base. Now you can opt to get Peter separately if you don't have room for the massive base, but I definitely wanted to have it. Now up front and center we do have an image of Spidey, that is the figure himself. You do have an open window showcasing the figure inside, a bunch more product shots on the other side, and one with him hanging upside down holding a coffee cup. I've always wondered how the coffee doesn't simply pour out of the cup. Now one of the coolest features of this Sentinel Peter is that he comes with the Peter Parker head sculpt from Miles' universe, the blonde version. That, I'm pretty sure, is something we haven't seen from any other companies as of yet, and I'm super excited to see what it looks like. Now the back section of the box will be the base. We'll set that aside for now, and don't worry, you will see it again a little bit later in the video, but I'm more interested in getting Peter out here. And here we have him. First in-hand impressions are that this is a very interesting looking and feeling figure. We'll get more into that throughout the course of the video. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have most, but not all, of the parts and pieces. We do still have to look at the diorama display base, and we will do that in the very next clip. Now, interestingly enough, one of the accessories is actually part of the instruction manual. As you can see on the list of items included, there is a newspaper. You actually have to cut it out of the instruction manual and assemble it yourself. So technically, yes, a newspaper is included, but I personally don't like cutting up my instruction manuals, so I'm going to go without. Now you do get a dynamic display base, it's the usual Sentinel style. Multiple different tracks and an arm, which can of course slide along it, it has multiple joints up top. It can bend in a variety of different ways and swivel from side to side, plus you do have an articulated waist grabber up top as well. And I'm pleased to report that that display base comes included with the deluxe and standard versions of Peter B. Parker. Now you also get multiple different web accessories. Of course, this is Spidey, he had to come with webs. These do slot into his hands, and then there are multiple different sections which sprout out of the top. These can be used, say, if Spidey is stopping a train, or trying to hold a ferry together, or for a whole host of other poses. I'm super glad he came with these. Now, I'm also pleased to report that they aren't just boring straight white lines. There is a ton of swirly twirly sculpting over the top, so they don't look super boring. You also get two just regular straight web lines. You can use these to have Spidey hanging upside down from his display base perhaps, and they are sculpted and detailed very nicely, just like the other web lines. You do get, and this I think is the first time I have ever seen this, two different midsections. One that is meant to very clearly be Peter B. Parker, it's a little bit fuller, 
and the waist section is a little bit wider, whereas the one on the right is far smaller in every dimension and it is ripped. You can clearly make out a six pack on the front and the waist piece is a lot smaller. You will see both of those on Spidey a little bit later in the video. Now seeing as this can be both versions of Peter Parker, both B and just Peter, you do have multiple different head sculpts as well. The one on the right is very clearly meant to replicate his expression from the diner scene when he was licking his fingers when talking to Miles, and the other is kind of a shocked expression. You can remove the glasses and place them on either of these two sculpts, or even on the other Peter, technically, if that's what you wanted to do. These might just be my favourite Peter B. Parker head sculpts from any company to date. The expressions are bang on, the hair is very nicely sculpted, and he does have a subtle 5 o'clock shadow around the edges. They are very impressive. You also get this. This is the Chris Pine Peter Parker with the blonde hair, a much more confident expression. The overall shape and size is almost identical, but it is very clearly a different version of Peter. I love the way this looks. Lastly, you do get two different masked head sculpts, one with just regular sized eyes and the other with massive ones. Now I know this is technically supposed to be a shocked expression, but if you were a fan of McFarlane Spidey, you could technically use this head sculpt to create an animated stylized version of that version of Spidey. They are a very interesting shape though. They are quite flat on the front and they come up to a little bit of a point at the back. It's just that I've never really seen a Spidey head sculpt in this style before, in this scale, so I wasn't expecting to see something like that. You do also get a full array of Spidey hands, including web shooting hands with the webs pre-attached, that I love to see, but you also get the diner hands. Interestingly enough, you don't get a burger to actually have him hold here, because that's what this hand is specifically meant for, and then this one where he was licking his fingers. This might just be my favourite hand though, it's the coffee cup pre-sculpted into the hand itself. You can have him holding this upside down defying gravity, but it is empty, there is no coffee sculpted on the inside. The rest of the hands are the usual suspects. You've got wall crawling hands, you've got fists, and you've got web gripping hands. Everything that you'd expect to see from Spidey. What we are going to do now though is get the diorama dis display base out here and take a closer look. And here we have it. It's super simple and it gets the job done perfectly. It's a nice lightweight vinyl material, meaning it doesn't weigh a ton, it's not going to destroy your glass shelves, and it's super versatile. I mean that in multiple ways. The first of which is that it's completely flat on the bottom, so you can simply pop it in your display case and away you go. But it's also flat on the back, and there is a hole in the middle. So if you wanted to, you could totally wall mount this. Now I don't know if that's what this section is for because that is fully fixed. I thought that might be a peg that you can remove, but it's totally part of the overall piece. So you'd have to cut around that to get access to that section. As for the second reason why this is versatile, it's because it's literally a gargoyle display base. You could use this with anyone. You wanted to pop Batman on here, you could absolutely do that. You wanted to pop Moon Knight on there, you could do that as well. I can see a ton of people taking a ton of photos of other characters standing on this very display base. Now it does fit in to the animated style of Into the Spider-Verse, meaning the sculpt is rather blocky and the paint applications are quite flat. There isn't a ton of shading or weathering or washes down in the crevices. It's flat, but that is exactly how I expected it to look 
based off Into the Spider-Verse. What we are going to do now though is get Peter himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And just like in the movie, we are starting out with the Chris Pine version of Spidey. We will be converting him in the next clip to the Peter B. Parker version, but I wanted to kind of do it in chronological order. As the figure is now standing in front of me though, I am super impressed. The proportions are bang on. Sentinel? You have done an amazing job of translating a super stylized Spidey design into plastic format while still retaining a ton of articulation. This guy's very impressive. The Miles was great, but he has his issues. This guy is my favorite in the line so far. I know, they've only released two. But we will have to wait and see as time goes on if they make any other characters from the movie. Because I am all in. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now I do currently have him wearing the more shredded ab section and the smaller crotch piece. I will switch both of those out for the Peter B. Parker versions in just a second. I also want to try out this blonde haired Peter head sculpt on the body because I'm curious to see what that looks like. Now we won't spend a ton of time discussing the various head sculpts here and now because we've already done that. I do want to make mention though of the fact that the masked sculpts do sit slightly lower on the neck. He does still very clearly have a neck, unlike their Miles, where it was far more egregious. This totally fits with the super stylized look of the body. And that's exactly how I would describe this. Super long and lanky limbs, a wider upper torso that tapers down to a very slender waist, and even around the back, They've made these huge cutouts on the thighs so you can get the maximum range of motion possible when bending the knees. Plus, it's on the back so you're never really going to see it anyway. I'd rather them with a figure like this with fully exposed joints do certain things to get the most out of the range of motion. Now let's talk about the texture on the suit because the entire thing is covered in it. The red sections do have this kind of basketball-like look and feel, whereas the blue sections have a bunch of smaller squiggly lines that come together to make up the overall pattern. The Spidey logo is of course present front and back, and I'm pleased to report every single one of the web lines have been painted. They haven't painted them in a super harsh black, they've gone more with a brown or a darker grey, just so they aren't a super stark contrast with the rest of the suit. Now the legs are predominantly blue, so there isn't a ton to talk about down here, but the boots do taper down to a very thin section before coming out a little bit wider to house the ankle pegs. You don't have any detail on the underside of the feet, but if you're like me and you want to see what the Peter Parker head sculpt looks like on the body, it's super simple to swap it out, it's literally just on a ball joint. And when you pop it on there, this looks awesome. I am super attached to Peter B. Parker, don't get me wrong, but I am still very tempted to display him wearing this head sculpt. It sits up a little bit higher on the neck peg, which is a very good thing. Because of the size of his chin, if it was sitting any lower, there would be no neck visible from the front whatsoever. And I think it does fit in proportion to the rest of the body. I am curious though, what do y'all think of this? If you picked up this figure, would you go with this head sculpt or one of the other ones? Speaking of the other ones, I will now convert him to the Peter B. Parker version. 
And there you have it. It was a super straightforward process. You literally remove the upper torso, eat on a ball joint, pull off the legs, also on ball joints, slide on the new crotch section, and then put everything back together. And now we have Peter B. Parker. He does have a slightly rounder belly with far less definition, and I kind of like the way this looks. It fills out the gap between the upper torso and this midsection very nicely. I've also taken the liberty of popping on the shocked Spidey head sculpt, which I kind of see as an animated version of the McFarlane Spidey. These massive eyes really do work for me. But let's be honest, if you're picking this guy up, you're probably going to display him with one of the Peter B. Parker head sculpts. And yeah, they fit perfectly. It's the same overall shape and size as the blonde-haired Peter sculpt. I am not sure currently which way I'm going to go. I am very tempted to pick up a second version of this figure so I can have one with the blonde-haired Peter head sculpt, another with the brown-haired version, but as of right now, I am undecided because they all look so darn good. I was tempted by the blonde-haired one, but now seeing this, it puts me right back into the cinema when I saw Into the Spider-Verse for the first time time. It's a very impressive and accurate looking figure. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Sentinel Miles on the left, check out the review on him if you haven't already by the way, and Peter on the right from the very same line. These two were literally designed to go together, and they look fantastic fantastic side by side. Even though I still do have the issue with Miles's neck being slightly too short, Peter kind of now makes him make more sense as part of the collection. It is a very interesting stylized look, they captured it and translated it very well into figure format. Now I am curious, how far is this line going to go? Are we eventually going to get a scorpion and a prowler? I am super excited to see where Sentinel go next. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck. Combined, it looks forward the full way and it goes back a ton, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there. They will, of course, go forward and back, and you do have a ball joint at the shoulder for a little bit of side to side. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow that does go past 90, plus a hinge and swivel wrist peg. As for the torso, there is a ball joint at the midsection and another at the waist. Combined crunching forward to there, going back to there, swivel and then a massive amount of pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there. There is of course a double bend at the knee that goes way past 90 thanks to the massive divot that's been cut out on the back of the thigh. You do also have a swivel and hinge forward and back for the foot plus toe articulation. Just wrapping up on the Sentinel Peter B. Parker from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Going into this, I was excited, but I didn't expect to love this figure as much as I now do. They nailed this release. I didn't think they were going to be able to strike a balance between getting those super slim, lanky, stylized proportions and including a ton of articulation. I now know to never doubt Sentinel, because they have done exactly that. Plus, he comes with a ton of accessories, the outfit has a ton of texture on it, the paint applications are crisp and clean, and for the first time I think ever, you can create both versions of Peter from the movie. If you want to go for the ripped version, you can do that. If you want to go for the Peter B. Parker version from later on, you can do that as well. So it's not only super posable, 
very stylized, but it's very versatile. So for me, it ticks all the boxes that I was hoping it would. And it now just might be my favourite smaller scale Spidey in my collection. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month instalment plans and an awesome reward system. While you're down there, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.